This is going to be a short video on the continuity test feature that most meters have. The reason I'm doing this video is a lot of people do meter reviews and of course that's part of it is how good is the continuity tester. These are the meters that I have left from doing my high voltage testing. Of course the Fluke 101 was the winner of that competition. Even beating out my uh, 87V. One of the things I didn't like about this meter is the continuity tester on this is very slow. I was basically looking at this and I was like, wow, yeah, that that's very poor. And this is typically what you see people do in meter reviews. You know, they're sliding the leads together. Of course, the human's involved. And I don't understand why you would look at a continuity test that way if you're actually doing meter reviews. It seems very subjective. You know, you have the leads involved and you have the human involved. So what I'd like to do is a very quick review of these four meters just looking at the continuity test feature of the meters themselves so obviously again having these meters hooked up with just a set of leads we can see that fluke is actually quite slow this is the Ampro Bay M510 again slow but faster than this you know, and I think that's the problem I've got is what does that really mean? If you're trying to quantify that data, going like this is not a good way to do that. I'm going to show you what I would do. I mean, if I were doing meter reviews, this would be done electronically. We're going to run a 50% duty cycle in the continuity tester. And I'm going to vary the frequency and I'm going to measure what that frequency is when the beaver stops functioning. So this is 50% duty cycle again and we're at a one hertz rate. Let's just see where it fails at. This is two hertz. Three hertz. Four hertz. Five hertz. And it's starting to skip. 5.9, 5.7, so 5.1 hertz is roughly where it stays functioning. So at 5.1 hertz with a 50% duty cycle, we we're measuring a pulse with roughly uh, 98 milliseconds. That, in my opinion, not very fast, but let's just see how this compares against the other meters. So this is looking at the amp probe. This is the AM510. So this is again 1 hertz, 2 hertz, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right there she's skipping. And it looks like 14.9 hertz. So pretty good, but you notice you can hardly hear the beeper. But still pretty impressive. Okay, let's try the Unity. This is the UT90A. I should mention again that the Sampro AM510, uh, this meter was damaged in the high voltage testing that I had done. I had since repaired it. And I also made some slight modifications to this for the input protection circuitry. This Unity UT90A was also damaged in my testing. And again, I had repaired it. And I also made modifications to the front end of this meter as well. Same thing as the amp probe. It shouldn't affect the continuity of the tester. Well, you can hear how loud this thing is compared to the other two. So this is again one hertz, two hertz, three hertz, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is 16 hertz, 
20 hertz. I mean, that's 300 hertz right there. It's 10.2 kilohertz. Very loud, very audible very fast. This is our uh, Maztec rebranded Centec P98674. This is a Harbor Freight Meter. It's a little quieter than this Unity. Not bad. So there's two hertz. Three, four, five, six, There's 15 hertz, 20 hertz, 30, 30. <laughs> you hear it aliasing. Yeah, roll off is pretty significant from the audio standpoint. This is a uh, 10.8 kilohertz. For the next test, we're going to run it at a fixed frequency, and we're going to vary the pulse width. And we want to know the minimum pulse width required for the meters to detect a short. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with a fluke. And again, this will all be at a two hertz rate. And there you have it. So it looks like 40 milliseconds. Okay, next we'll just try the amp probe. Okay, it looks like the amp probe will work all the way down to 20 milliseconds. Next, let's try the Unity. I'm making these measurements in increments of 5 milliseconds. And that's not enough resolution to get the unity to trip up. So whatever it is, it's less than 5 milliseconds. So very good. And last but not least, the Syntec. I don't know if you can hear this, it actually is working 
at 5 milliseconds. But it's very quiet. Let's see where we can actually hear it at. That's at 20 milliseconds. It's definitely working fairly good there. For the next test, what I'd like to know is the threshold where the meters detect the short. So I'm just using my decade box. This thing seldom gets used. This is a good, uh, good place to actually use it. We'll start with a fluke. This is with a dead short. Looks like 77 ohms. It's pretty much on all the time. Next we have the amp probe. And this is 85 ohms here, and 84 ohms here. We'll say 84 ohms, it's on. Next up, the unit T. Unity actually has some hysteresis to it. Very nice. Looks like 70 ohms it'll turn off. It looks like about 10 ohms of hysteresis. And last is the Maztec. No hysteresis with this. Looks like our threshold is 47 ohms. This is 48 ohms and 47 ohms. So here's all the data that I collected. The Fluke 101 ran up to 5.1 hertz. The Amprobe 15 hertz. It became pretty quiet though at that frequency. At 8 hertz you could really hear the thing beeping. The Unity was very loud, it was the loudest of the three meters and continued to be loud all the way up beyond 10,000 Hz. The Syntec was also working well beyond 10,000 Hz. So these two meters far exceed these. The Fluke again the slowest of the four tested. Looking at the minimum pulse width required to trip them up, the Fluke 101 required 40 milliseconds the Amprobe 20, these two last meters, the Unity and the Syntec, less than 5. However, the Syntec, really 20 milliseconds was the usable point, putting it on par with the Amprobe. Again, Unity was best. As far as trip resistance, I can see benefits for detecting at a lower resistance threshold, or I can see benefits for wanting to detect at a higher threshold. I mean, personally, I think a meter you could even uh, have that programmable you know maybe the manufacturers could add a feature like that at some point to make the filter for the continuity tester programmable you could actually have a uh, threshold for the time and you could have a threshold for the resistance value you know they've been making meters like this for a long time what do I know <laughs>
So anyway, hope that's helpful. So again, I think uh, testing them in some kind of manner like this where you're actually measuring the frequency response of it is probably a better way to look at the, uh, the continuity tester.